Oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on when and if you're watching this live. Uh, so thanks for joining us. We are doing our first first webinar of 2024. Um, obviously something that's <clears throat> of interest to a lot of people. Uh, so just steel connection design workflows. And this time we're gonna be focusing on STAD Pro integrating with Idea Statica. Uh, next slide. Uh, so as usual, just in case you're not familiar with uh, go to webinar, <clears throat> there's a questions panel um, in the control panel that you can submit your questions yeah, throughout the throughout the session. Um, so please feel free to use that as we go forward. Okay. Um, and then just to talk about an agenda. Um, so I, actually, I guess. First, uh, let me just introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. Uh, so my name is Dave Eckrode. I'm the director for the US Office of Idea Statica. Uh, and as pretty normal, uh, Andrea Costello will be doing most of the present presenting today. Um, and she's our one of our product engineers here in the US. Um, so All just right. talking, you know, reviewing an agenda, uh, we will be reviewing Checkbot as kind of a, a hub for structural engineering models. Uh, we will talk about how to kind of share a checkbot file if necessary, um, discuss connection library, and how to kind of export some connections to a single file, as well as use the online viewer. Um, so with that, I am going to hand it off to Andrea. All right. Thank you, David. Um, okay, so let's get started with this presentation. All right. And um, okay, give me one second here. Let me set up my PowerPoint. Okay. So for for this webinar, I'll I'll follow like a design workflow, and this is like the first step that I am going to talk about. So the structural design process starts um, with a global structural analysis, and that is. Um, analyzing and designing the whole structure, right? So this global analysis in this case will be performed in StatPro and by the structural engineer, okay? So um, I'll use um, a series of videos where I am doing some demonstrations, okay? And um, this first part will be related to the global structural analysis. So the structural engineer will define all the geometry, materials, and specifications, like here I am showing how the offsets were added here in um, StatPro for some of the members, okay, to have those members top of steel. Also, of course, supports are specified uh, for all the, all, the, all the nodes. And then loading actions are specified, load combinations and design properties. So then StatPro can tell you if the members are passing depending on the AISC limit states. Now you get member end forces, utilization ratios for the members and everything gets sized. So now the structural engineer wants to share the structure details to the connection designer, right? So with Idea Static Checkbot, the engineer can do this. So to do that, you will see here how we will call Idea Statica Checkbot from user tools once this is installed, right? Checkbot application will be open, okay? And then you need to create a project here, right? So you will be able to create this project and select the code that you want to use, create the project. Then um, the engineer has two options, sharing a specific connections, or sharing the whole structure, okay? So if you want to uh, specifically send just one type of joint or one joint from the uh, model, you need to select the nodes and all the related members. Then you go back to Checkbot, and then you click over connections, and that, that joint will be imported, okay? But also, we have the option to select the whole structure. So for that, you go back to StatPro, all right, and then you select the whole structure, 
using the, the options in StatPro, and then click over the connections icon here in Checkbot. Then you will see here um, the, the whole structure. And um, so I'll show you that in a live demonstration, that model in a live demonstration, okay? So now that the whole structure is in Idea Statica, let's prepare the model to get it ready for the connection design process, okay? So let me bring that checkbot file, and I am also having here the stat profile, okay? And let me go back here to checkbot file, okay? So, as you, as you saw, we imported the whole structure. And the first thing that I want to show you is that you can um, manipulate the model as you were as you were doing with uh, the connections in Idea Static Connection. You can rotate this model, okay? Zoom in and zoom out with this, the, the wheel of your mouse. You can also rotate it by pressing Control and the wheel of your mouse to, to rotate this model, all right? And then use all well, use this cube here to rotate uh, or to see different views of the model. Then you also have the option to have this um, transparent, like solids, solid view, and then uh, the wireframe view, okay? So in that way, it is easier to select the joints that were imported. Anyway, if you go back to the solid view, you can see uh, the, 3D, um, the 3D members, Okay, 3D representation of the members, and then the joints will be represented by these small cubes. As I said, if you go back to the wireframe view, it's easier to select members. All right, so what else we can do here in this main checkbot um, application? Also, you can select a node, like in this case, let me go back and select this node here. That is the one selected, okay? And also you will see which is that uh, node there. And you can say, okay, let me just bring the wireframe view here back. And you can say, okay, I want to see if this this joint will have any moment forces, okay? So uh, you can select what, what diagram to see in this 3D view from here, okay? Here at the top, select the load combination that you want to see. So in this case, you can see all the load combinations that were imported from Stat Pro, so that's good, okay? So you say, I want to see that one. Okay, let's select this uh, one from here. Okay, say, okay, this one, okay? And then you click over the draw option, okay? Then, because I am selecting this, this joint, you will see all the moment forces there. So you can see the moment, the, the moment, um, on this member, okay? If you want to see other members' uh, diagram forces, then you need to click over those elements there, and then you will know like, okay, this, for instance, this joint will, will assess that, um, that member joint with a moment, right? Coming from this member here, right? So that's one thing you can do. Then you can also go to this icon here where it says loads. And then you will see all the load combinations that were imported. Look at this. Here we have tons of load combinations for this specific model. Also, the load cases that can be uh, used for the design of the connections. If you click over this option, all ULS fun, okay, you can see that we here we have uh, the evaluate critical effects option. So that option will help you to just bring the critical effects for each joint, once we open joint by joint, okay? So if you want to assess that or the, the connections, the connections um, that you will design with all the load combinations, then you'll need to uncheck this and save it, or well, say, click over here, save. But we won't do this for this one, we'll just keep evaluate critical effects. So that um, saves you a lot of design time, right? So, um, all right, so you can see here that we are importing the geometry. I haven't shown you like how that joint uh, is shown 
in the in in idea Aesthetica, but um, before opening one of the joints. Um, if you see here in the solid view, let me turn off the forces on that on those members. Um, here we have this joint, and this this column is like separated by that joint there, right? But in real life, maybe this column will be a continuous element. But you can see that here is uh, non-continuous, and it, it's broken by by that node. That is because that's how it comes from StatPro. If it has a node, then this is a separated uh, member. So that means this is not a physical member, right? So that's why I am referring in this process to be like the preparation for the connection design, because the physical member setup is important for the connections. If you keep this, this node like this, maybe the connection designer will design a connection for these two members, but in real life, that won't be a connection there, okay? So to do that, uh, like in this case, the the, mem the member is broken by, by those nodes, you can click over this member here and use the merge option. So you click over the merge option, then you say, okay, I'll want to merge all these members here or just uh, this four. So you click over this uh, four elements or all the members that you want to merge in just one column. So you click over here and then say, okay. Then that will be a continuous member, okay? And that can be done also with uh, the beam the beam elements. Like in this case, we want this, this, um, this member to be continuous, right? Because then if not, we will need to create a connection within this joint. So we don't want that. All right, so that is like the preparation that you will need. Then one other thing that it's um, important, those are the offsets, all right? Uh, as I show you, for some of the members in the main SATPRO model, they added the offsets there, okay, for, for certain members like in this one. So if you click over this, this member here, you can see that it has the eccentricity um, specified here, and you can see the size of that cross section over here once you click over the members, okay? But there are some um, engineers or the people that it's using a stat pro that um, doesn't really model the eccentricities, okay? That is only important when you're designing the connection here in in one of the softwares like that you are using for in this case idea static right so um that's why we give you that ability to do that like if you for instance here in the second level for this member let's see this member here that member does it has that member yeah let me see one of here um all right let's let's try with this so this one doesn't have any eccentricity and then maybe we want to match this uh top flange with this one here okay so then we'll need to use the ec uh value and then we can change that like minus one and then um that will be specified for this member you see it it is uh down there but also this is new. Um, if you say, okay, I want to move up all these main members here, right? So you can click over that member and then press uh, control, okay, for those three members. And then you're multi selecting those three members. And then you can see here that we are selecting three items. So you can change the, the eccentricity. Well, in this case, I, I I have the multiple values because I changed this, but if we click over here, let me just click on one. Let me unselect those members. Okay, again, three of them. Oh my God. 
right? These two. All right. So two uh, members were selected, and I can apply the same eccentricity for those two members, right? So you can multi-select members to apply uh, the same eccentricity. So that is that is really useful instead of just clicking in one by one and changing that. Okay. Um, so in this case here, if you see, you can see the stat pro sign or well, the stat pro uh, legend here. And then you are seeing an icon that it's uh, connected. So that means this is, uh, I have stat pro open here, right? And it's like linked, okay? So if you were to change something from the stat pro model, when you have the connected icon here, you can uh, synchronize the full structural model if something was changed, okay? Or if I select one of the joints, um, you can also synchronize maybe the members that are related to that uh, joint, okay? Because maybe you change this member, so instead of synchronizing the full model, you just uh, synchronize this current item selected, all right? So once once you you are seeing this uh, connected icon, you can do that. You can synchronize changes, okay, from a stat bro, and that is possible. All right. So now let's just open how um, how a connection is imported or how a joint is imported. So I am selecting this one that I already uh, merged uh, the column. And then I can say, okay, I want to open that joint. So you can see this is the 87. Once you select here, the connection that will be highlighted here. And you can see the connected members and you can open that connection from here. Can open. So you can use the open option or by right clicking over the 87 and then you will have that option there. Okay, so that, that joint, we open this. So that joint will contain the geometry coming from StatPro. But the most important part is that we get the forces, right? The end forces on this member and the end, the internal forces of the column member. So you will see all the details here. And this is for the um, 1053 uh, load combination. All right, and again, you're just seeing the critical load effects, but they are more than 10, all right? So you will, once you start designing this connection and then you run the analysis, you will run the analysis for all these load combinations, all right? So um, the good thing of importing the model from an analysis software, like in this case, StatPro, is that you get all the information, all the correct geometry material and, um, and the load combinations, right? So you don't have to manually input those forces here, okay? All right, so let's continue. I, I want to save this because I didn't do nothing to that one, okay? Let's continue in this uh, presentation here. Okay, let me go back here. Okay, to my presentation. Both. All right. So, um, if you are not the final user of this checkbot file that I was showing you, let me show you how you can share a checkbot file. Okay. So, um, you can see that this is um, connected um, model to StatPro because we have a StatPro. Then to review where we have this checkbot file, you need to review where this stat profile was saved. Once you identify where is that, then you can see that the checkbot file folder is created in the same location, okay? So this checkbot file folder can be either copy to a cloud system or in this case, uh, OneDrive. That's what I am doing here. You can copy there that checkbot file and then you can uh, share this checkbot file to other people that may work in this in this um, in this model. Okay. Another thing that you can do 
is that um, you can zip that file folder and send it over to other people by uh, via email. Okay, so that is possible. So in reality, we don't have like a checkbot file, but the checkbot file is translated into a checkbot file folder. Okay, so that is how you will share this um, this file, and then the other people can start working on that on that file. Okay. All right. Before jumping into the design process, um, let's let's do a poll. All right. David will help me with this poll. Sorry about that. Um, no problem. So the poll question is, how do you share structural information for connection design? Um, do you share the analysis model? Do you share end reactions on your construction documents? Or are you using Checkbot? So we'll just leave this open for a few minutes, or a few seconds, rather. I know we have a lot to cover. So we'll just give it another 15, 20 seconds here. Five more seconds. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna go ahead and close that. And let me just share the poll results for you. So, interesting results. Um, mm -hmm. Majority are sharing checkbot files. So that's- uh, That's good. Interesting. That's good. Yeah. Um, also about a third sharing structural analysis models and a third showing reactions on the drawings. So. Uh, it's pretty a good interesting. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We will now hide it. So. All right. Okay. Let's continue then. Um, right. So now that uh, the model is ready, let's say the checkbot file is ready, the actual connection design starts here, right? So let's see a demonstration of this process in checkbot. Okay, so once uh, you as a connection designer gets the checkbot file, you can open a checkbot file by opening IDEA main application. So you open the checkbot application, then browse to the checkbot file folder, and then open it. So if you don't have a stat pro in your computer and you don't have stat model open at the same time, you will see the disconnected icon that I showed you before. Anyway, we're opening that, and then you can see that disconnected icon over here, All right? Then let's open one joint, and as shown before, no connections are modeled in these joints, okay? So you will see it here. So let's try if there is a connection for this geometry in connection library. So, well, no options available. Okay, no problem. Let's use the idea statica capabilities to start a model from scratch. So in this case, I am using a simple shear tab for the beam. And then um, a gusset blade operation for the bracing. I can uh, set up the details for these two operations. And for the gusset plate, I am setting up the details. Then what I can do is I can copy this operation to the other member just because it has the same geometry, okay? So that is the benefit of using the idea static operations. Everything is assigned to something, so you can use this copy feature and then just change the assignment. So in this case, only four operations were used for this connection, a very clean uh, connection or design, all right? So now let's calculate the connection for all the load combinations and review the results for this connection. 
So everything looks okay. I am happy with these results. And I know that I have the same joint in other locations of other location of the structure. Okay, so I know that. So I am going to use connection library. I can go back to the design tab and I am going to uh, click over publish and then save this design for other connections. So I click publish again, that is publish it, okay? Then I save this connection because everything is okay. I close this connection. And in the main checkbot interface, let's open one of the similar joints we have in the model. Now let's click the propose button to pull the connection I just designed. Click apply. So you click over the propose icon. Then we have that same connection then you say OK, and that's apply. In this case, the geometry was the same. So everything was applied smoothly, all right? One thing to note is that for these joints, you need to make sure you set up the correct boundary conditions. That is model type and force position. The first position, um, it's remember that it's important only when you have a shared connection. All right, so now let's calculate, review the results, save this connection, and close it. So everything is okay again with this connection. We can save this connection, close the connection, and uh, go back to the main interface. And we can repeat this process as needed, all right? Propose, select the connection, apply, and rerun the analysis. Now, let's open a different joint, okay? So as you can see, part of this joint has the same geometry as the connection we did before. So you can see the geometry there. So for this case, we'll use the connection library as well. But when we click propose, it looks for a connection with all the members in the current joint. But we also have the option to select certain members from the joint and look for something, like in this case. So I apply this connection just for those four members. And then we are missing a connection for the other two members, right? So for the other members, let's try again with connection library and the selection option. Propose, selection, Okay, oh, click OK, and no lock. Well, let's try with Web Connection Library. So what is that? This website helps us to find a connection for the given geometry that can be set up here. And that will look for a connection in 400K connection database, okay? So you search for, for a connection, you click over the search. Well, of course, set up the geometry, click over search. And you need to be logged in and then select the connection to click on the open in desktop button, okay? So you can open the connection here in Idea Static Connection. You can review it and then you can use 
the uh, process that I have been used. Publish it into your personal connection library. Um, save it with a name. Save it either in your personal connection library or company connection library. Okay. So that's what I am going to do. Use, uh, do sorry. Click over publish. Publish again. Then I go back to the connection that I was working on and I repeat the propose selection and apply process. Click propose and you can see again that we are doing the selection process press control to multi select members click ok and then select that connection of course uh, not all the connections are exactly designed for the use of geometry right so you need to review the design and modify as needed but the good news is that you get all the operations model, right? So it's really easy to modify things like dimensions, uh, the bolts, and everything according to your geometry. But half of the work is already done. <laughs> you have all the operations now there. Now you can run the analysis and review results. And maybe publishing the full joint again to your connection library and repeat the process. All right. So that is how uh, we are proposing this connection library design process like let me go to the next slide. So to sum up the previous demo, uh, connection library desktop and the web connection library are very powerful tools that can increase the speed of modeling in Idea Statica. Remember, you just publish a connection that you already have, right? Then once you have a geometry that has that uh, connection for those specific members, you click over propose, you can use the selection option and then select the connection you want and then apply. In this case, uh, well, the, the, the demonstration that I was doing, only one option was shown there, okay? But for like the mo more simple connections, you will see more options. The ones that are in orange, those are uh, templates that are from Idea Statica database, okay? so. Um, always make sure that you look for something in the selection option okay so during the design process in checkbot an idea connection you get joints with many load combinations like the ones we we, we saw in, in the demonstration in the video i showed you before the analysis time was cut off from the recording of course However, now I want to share some tips to reduce the design time, okay? One tip is to use the stop at limit strain on their code setup, and that will help you to stop the analysis whenever one component is near the failure, okay? So let's watch the recommended process. When you have connections with more than 10 load combinations, like in this case, all right, that will help you to reduce time. So every time the design process starts with the first design iteration, right? So you have the first design iteration, and instead of running that first analysis with all the load combinations, I recommend that you unselect all the load effects. So you can do that by right-clicking over load effects. You will see that, unselect all. Then right-click again over uh, the load effects 
and select calculate load extremes. That will help you to uh, select just load extremes from that list of load combinations. From those, manually identify one or two critical loads. In this case, I just select two load combinations with the maximum positive moment on that member and the maximum negative moment for that member. Later, click on Code Setup to activate the Stop at Limit Strain option, and then you calculate this uh, connection just for those two load combinations. So you can see that the analysis is stopped at 46% of the analysis of the applied forces. Okay, so you can review the results and then decide in decide what to modify depending on the results, right? In this case now, I am adding stiffeners on the column, changing the bolts uh, sizes, and then rerun the analysis. So in this case, the analysis uh, was only stopped at 73% of the applied forces, okay? So we are improving this. So now we go and go back to the design tab, change the design, reinforce the connection maybe, then rerun the analysis. So this can be repeated as needed, but instead of doing the analysis for all the load combinations, you just run two, two combinations. Again, this is the four design iteration. You go back and I am modifying this end plate to have another, another bolts reef stiffeners on the end plate. I am changing the material of all the plates to be grade 50 and then rerun the analysis. Okay. So analysis now finish at 100% for those two load combinations and the final design test is to uh, run the analysis with all the load combinations, right? Now you can calculate this and see if that final design, it's okay for all the load combinations, okay? Then design, it's okay for all the combinations. So you save this connection and close the connection and that will be saved on your, on your checkbot file, right? So to be honest, um, of course, this is an edited video, but um, it took me like 20 minutes to finish this design or with all these design iterations. It really helps you to, um, to save time in this uh, design process, okay? Finally, the connection designer wants to get the calculation reports and wants to share results, sketches, drawings, and models, okay? In this case, that can be done uh, in Idea Static Connection and Online Viewer. In the following demo, I'll show you a process to get reports and deliverables. In Checkbot, once you have some connections designed, you will see a check mark for the connections that passed all the design checks or a red X mark for the ones failing the design. Now, you can multi-select connections. For that, I am changing to the wireframe view because it is easier to select the cubes. You click on the cubes that have a connection design already. And then um, you click over this icon that says connections. I'll show you that in the screen. So from here, you can export um, those connections into a single IDEA connection file, all right? And here you are unlinking these connections from the checkbot file. In that way, you can open that file in IDEA static connection directly, okay? So you can see that I am saving that uh, file 
into uh, my folder in OneDrive so you can share that, that file. Then you can double click if you have Idea Static here in your computer and then open all those selected connections in Idea Static Connection. So there you can handle the connection and modify members' properties if that is needed. And you can run the full, I mean, the analysis for all those connections that you have there. So here I am reviewing all the designs, okay? All right, so I am seeing all the details. If you click over the members, that can be changed, right? Contrary to the to to what you can do in just in checkbot file where you cannot change the member properties. And from here, from this uh, information tab, you can calculate all the analysis. However, the main reason I am showing you this process is that you can pull the reports of all these connections at once. So once you have all the analysis run, you go to the report tab and here I am demonstrating three types of reports. One is the brief one, and then you click over the all items in the report. So that is really useful because you will, you will pull all the brief reports for all the connections, all right? Click over generate, and then see the results for all the connections. Then if you want to get a picture on those brief reports, then maybe it's better to select the one page report. In that one page report, you will see the, 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 the model, materials, the summary of the analysis, and also the load combinations used in this analysis. Okay, then I am also showing the bill of materials report. And then for that, you can also use the selection option so that you can select some of the connections to be in this report. These drawings can be sent also to the XF file from these op options over here. Okay. Another um, good thing of having the Idea Statica file is that you can share this file with other people that are not Idea Statica users and they can drag and drop the file into our online viewer. Here they will be able to review the connections in this file, so you can see all the 15 or 16 connections in this file. Once they click over the design tab, if you click over the members or any of the plates, you will see all the details of those um, items, right? So they, they review all the details and finally they can go back to the project tab and then download either an IFC file for that specific connection or a 3D drawing from that specific connection. So you have all these connections in just one file and then you can click over the IFC file icon and download that. The IFC file is an open file that can be used in BIM applications like Revit, Tecla, SDS2, so they can uh, bring those details into those applications. All right, it's time for the uh, for the second poll. If you can help me with that, David. Sure, sure. So let me just grab it here. Okay, so. Poll question is: What tool from Idea Static do you use to share results? So is it the online viewer? Is it the typical calculation report? Or do you produce some sketches from the detail portion? So we'll leave this open for a few seconds. Okay, give it another five seconds. All 
And I have to admit, the results on this one are not surprising. <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and close that and let me share it. So over two thirds, just doing the, the standard calculation report. Uh, it's good to see a quarter of you are using the viewer um, and then 8% sketches. So good information. That, yep, that's, that's good. Um, now, if you didn't know that you can share the online beer uh, file, well, the, the, the idea connection beer uh, file, then that's um, another thing that you can share now. Yep. All right. Um, all right. So the last the last slide here in this presentation is how to install the plugin in StatPro, right? Uh, that's an important step. So once you install Idea Statica in your computer, or if you already have that, you go to uh, the Beam uh, tab, okay? And then you can click over the Activate Your Beam link. The plugin is only available for version Stat of StatPro 2023 and version 22, okay? So that is uh, one thing important. Then if it says Install, then you have to go to StatPro and use the uh, uh, um, I just forgot the the icon utilities user tools and there you will see the idea statica checkbot um, icon okay if you don't see that um, my recommendation is to uh, install Stat Pro with admin rights. Sometimes I have seen that that fixed the issue. Anyway, you can always contact us if you have issues um, when when you are um, trying to pull that checkbot uh, plugin. But this should do the work, all right? Um, then you click over there, close Idea Statica, and then open um, Start Pro, and then open Checkbot from there. Okay. All right, so we we still have time for some questions. Um, if you guys can help me with the questions. All right, yep. Uh, thank you, Lira. So there are a, a few questions uh, that we got throughout the webinar. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's start with this one. Um, user is asking, is there any issues when using connection library for EN code while designing by AIAC code? No, when, um, all right, so let me explain that. Um, well, in that example that I did in, in the video, you can see that that's the approach to do. Like you open that connection, save it into your connection library, and then you apply to that new connection file or whatever you're applying, right? But that connection file, it has already the correct design code, okay? It is only a problem if you want to use directly that connection in uh, from connect web connection library, because that one has a specific design code. But the workaround is to do what I, am, what I just did, like save it in your connection library and then apply to a new file with the correct design code. Hopefully that that's uh, that helps. Right, right. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have another one. Um, mm -hmm. Will Idea Statica update automatically if the stat model is updated? Uh, no. You'll need to come here into Checkbot and use um, the sync option here from the structural model, so that will synchronize the full structure. But that won't be automatical. You need to come here and click over here. Sounds good. All right, and uh, staying with, with this type of topic, if we change the eccentricity of the elements in Idea Statica, will it affect the loads calculated by StatPro? Yes, yeah, because you're adding an eccentricity, then maybe a moment or, yeah, a moment is created if you have an actual force. So yeah, that, that will be affected. All right. And whenever you create these um, eccentricities or manually adjust the eccentricities, 
is it applied at both end of the members or just one? Yes. As you can see here, I am selecting the full mo model and then um, maybe if I do it here, like this will be for the full member. So that's why we just have two eccentricity options. So we say minus two and that will move the full member down, right? So that will be applied okay. for the two nodes. All right, yep. All right, I'm reading through new questions we are getting. Uh -huh. um, another one, um, give me one second. Um, is it important to change the, the forces in the connection, uh, the model type? even if we don't have any moments going on in a connection. So you mean? Um, uh, let's see. Um, can you repeat that question? Sorry. Uh, it, it was, do we need to change the, the model type even if we don't have any moments? Um, so maybe if we have zero values on those moments, is there still a need to change the model type? Of a uh, I think I think that is important just when you have bracing elements. Um, for instance, if you see here the boundary condition here for this member for this bracing element is um, is um, um, pin joint, right? Okay. So that was the moment was released there. So for that member, I think if you go back to the if you go if you open this connection, then maybe it's uh, just necessary to, to add that because maybe you add an offset or you move that member with that offset. So then changing the model type will be beneficial for, for this design. All right. And uh, maybe this might be a, a quick answer. Mm -hmm. uh, will the changes done in the model, uh, in the checkbot model, will, will they be transferred back into stat? No, that's why it's um, not, yeah, that's why it is important that you do the changes in the stat pro instead of here, because you cannot, uh, let's say if you come here and click over this member and then change the cross section here, that won't be synchronized back to stat pro. So we recommend that you do all the changes in the stat pro, you synchronize it here, and this is the final, final design. That will be the final design. And that's why when you open one of the connections in from here from Checkbot, uh, if you open this connection, you cannot change the member geometry. That that will be gray out, right? Because we want that all the changes are made in the in the source of the model. That's in this case StatPro. Okay. Okay. Uh, I think we have uh, time for a couple more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, staying within this topic of cross sections and importing, um, user ask if we can import user defined sections from StatPro onto Idea Statica, or if you can go over the the process of of having that done. Um, if it's, I think if it's detected. Um, what some, if something is not detected here in, in, in Checkbot, you will have the option to uh, use the conversion option here. So for that case, for instance, say this, this wasn't like detected, all right? So I think you will be able to select something from here or maybe selecting just a dummy uh, item, just like a, I section and later you export that connection and then you create your own section with our with our um, general steel cross section editor if it's a really crazy <laughs> uh, section but if not if you find it here you can map it from here okay sounds good thank you Andrea and one more question uh, I believe there's some users still having questions with this. If you could show uh, quickly one more time uh, how to install the plugin for StatPro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all right. So 
you can go to Idea Statica here 23.1 and then you go to the beam tab, then activate your beam link. Say yes there. And from here, you can activate all the plugins for the different applications that you have installed in your computer. All right, so that will detect if you already have this this um, this application. And then in this case, I already have installed, but if you will see something like this. Okay, so you over, you click over here, and then the plugin for that application will be installed. In this case, this is installed already. Then to call the Checkbot app, you open a model in Stat Pro. You go to Utilities, Utilities, and then User Tools here, and then use this option here. Okay. All right, um, and we are we are getting some questions about uh, BIM availability for other software. Uh, could you point uh, to our participants where they can find the other plugins, the other, yeah. or maybe our online website where they can find more information for that? Yeah, so it, a good way to see if if we have them uh, it's uh, by opening that BIM tab and. Uh, activate your beam link and then you can see if there is something that it's useful for you or you can go to our website here let me go to idea then here you have a beam option then you go to checkbot either checkbot or uh, supported integrations. Yeah, it's better, the supported integrations website. So there you can um, look for the software that you're using, okay? And just an important thing, if you click over the Stat Pro, then here we have a tutorial that will show you step by step what to do. And also to troubleshooting some issues if you don't see the, the option, okay? Or the last thing is to manually install that plugin into StatPro, okay? And here you can see step by step how to import connections into Checkbot, okay? Okay, um, I believe this will be the, the end of the questions. Uh, we can okay. go ahead and do the closing remarks, Dave. <clears throat> okay, so just uh, some, some upcoming um, events for us. Uh, so in person, we will be attending uh, the SEA of Indiana uh, next week. Uh, our Midwest regional person, Jan, will be, will be there. Um, also, he'll be at the SEA of Kansas and Missouri in early April, and the entire team is going to be in San Antonio for the Steel Conference uh, later in March. Um, so definitely, if you plan on attending uh, the Steel Conference, definitely drop by. Uh, we'll be at booth 1405. Um, so those are the kind of the live events we have coming up in the next month or so. Uh, as far as the next webinar, uh, we will be working. We will be showing some steel to concrete connection. Um, and kind of simplifying those at the end of March, uh, March 27th. And then uh, we are still working on the subject for the April webinar, but it's tentatively scheduled for April 24th. Um, I know that that's going to be right around the time that version 24 is going to be released. Uh, so we're kind of debating whether we can do the version 24 update webinar or if we need to do another topic. Uh, so with that, I appreciate everyone's time. Uh, hopefully this was useful for you. Um, as a reminder, uh, the webinar will be posted to our website within the next few days, as well as our YouTube channel. Uh, and have a good rest of the day. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.